Now we are going to model uh, the shell using the cut geometry and do all the preprocessing and check the deformation. First import the SAT file that was exported from AutoCAD uh, that is available on Blackboard called shell1. Okay, it is imported. You can see it uh, in the view in the features as an ACES geometry. Now we are going to create material and section. Go to the materials, double click, and choose mechanical elasticity, elastic isotropic. We are going to use Young's models and Poisson ratio only. But remember about the units, we are going to use newtons and centimeters. Take notice that 220 gigapascals is 21 million newtons per square centimeters. Remember to use comma, not a dot, to dot, not a comma. Next, create a section. Since we are dealing with a shell model, we have to create a shell homogeneous section. Continue with the thickness of, uh, according to cut geometry, equal to centimeters. Confirm OK. Now we've created our section. Now we have to go back to the part and assign our section to all shell geometries. You see, you can assign the section, but you can also define to which, uh, which surface is representing this geometry that you have downloaded. So we will just stop. But if you are not sure which one, you can always go to the view part display option and render shell thickness. And you could see that he is putting the shell thickness inside of the cross section, which was our aim. OK, so now the cross section is defined and material is defined. Now we need to mesh our part. We go into mesh module. First, we define the global size of our mesh. Remember that our uh, mesh, our element size is 20 centimeters, so type at most 20. Now choose the element type. The default S for R element is OK for fin or thick shell. So we will stay with this one type of element and now mesh. Now do the mesh verification, go to mesh verify, select the part, click done. And you could see, ask him to highlight all the mesh elements that have wrong aspect ratio. So we have some problematic elements. But for now, we will leave it like that, not to lose too much time on meshing. So we've got our structure mesh. Then we go to the assembly. We select the instance and we've got one instance assembled. Now we create a static general step for analysis. And next thing, we are going to attach loads and boundary condition. We are going to use pressure load on the top surface of our truss. Confirm we've done. You can see you, you should choose brown or purple. It all depends because you remember that our shell has thickness. So we want to put the load on top, which is in our case brown. The purple one is the one below. So we choose brown, but it all depends on your configuration. And as for the load value, you can see that our load is should be recalculated from Q. So if we assume that our Q will be 20 kilonewtons per meter, then our recalculated P should be divided 20 divided by the truss depth. See, so our pressure in the end is 10 newtons per square centimeters to keep consistent with our Q. Now boundary conditions. Let's choose pin condition 
on both shell ends one and the other you remember to keep shift press to select both ends for one boundary condition definition select pint or the translation degrees of freedoms are blocked and click ok now we've got all our model prepared for analysis so create the job call it shell one click continue you can parallelize it for more process processors and now double click on the job and submit the job is submitted and in the moment we will now it is running And now it is completed with double right click results go into the deformation and you can see that our deformation is 0 0.2 centimeter which is okay with our rough estimation.